Hey Internet, Kura here from qqmore.net. Today I'd like to talk about the mysterious MMR system. Alright, this has been a controversial topic ever since, as many players claim that it is broken. I will not comment on whether it is or not, this is for you to judge, but I will try my best to explain the algorithms without complicated formulas or code and share some statistics on common issues to broaden the horizon. Before I start, I want to thank Joshua Davis, John Kopning, Even and Ray from the A-Team for helping me out with this guide. As always, let's start from scratch. The matchmaking system is an algorithm that decides who you play with and against. You also get assigned an own matchmaking rating, in short MMR, which describes how experienced and skillful you are to allow for accurate matchmaking. GW2 uses an algorithm based on Glico2. It's quite complex and was slightly tweaked to suit GW2 as it was initially designed for games like Chess and Go. If you're interested in the code, I've put a few links into the description. So let's go over the factors step by step. First up is your rank. And by this I don't mean your ladderboard ranking, rather if you're Doliac, Rabbit or Dragon's rank. This becomes later on a rather minor influence since Dragon's rank is quite common nowadays. Then there is your progression within the league system. So if you're playing on Amber Division, the system will factor that in. Additionally, your party size. Playing solo will give you preferred other solo opponents. When you play with a 5-man group, you might be sitting in a voice chat and therefore coordinate better, which lets the system prefer to match groups against groups. After that, there are only 4 variables left. First, your class. The system will put a penalty on teams that have duplicate professions. This, however, can be surpassed through relogging onto another character. Secondly, the time you are waiting in queue. Next is Dishonor. In order to encourage better sportsmanship, Dishonor is also a variable that mainly serves as a timeout if you leave a match before the end or dodge a queue. However, Dishonor actually has a direct impact on matchmaking. After all these were factored in, the system will combine this with your skill level. This is determined by who you win and lose against. If you win a lot of matches, the system will try to match stronger opponents against you and vice versa if you lose. Alright, so if we sum up all these modifiers, the end result is what defines your MMR. So although that sounds all good and dandy, many people complain about unfair matchmaking. It appears that there are sometimes bugs that cause you to be matched against full teams when you enter the queue all on your own. Then there are wild reports that people lost countless games in a row. There must be something wrong with it, right? Well, the Glico system works in preferences mostly, while trying to establish a precise matchmaking within a reasonable time, which will always lead to a compromise in between. Assume that there is a player who isn't really super pro at PvP, but also not new to it. He has a personal MMR of, let's assume, 5. The plan for this evening is to play a few rounds with friends, who also happen to be on the same skill level. So the Glico system will now, since they are all on the same level and within a group, automatically try to find a group that is on their level. At best, this would be a 5-man group with an MMR of 5. Time passes by and after a while there was no match. So what happens now? Are they doomed to stay in queue forever? Not really. The system as said prefers to match your pre-made group against a pre-made group. However, as time goes it will likely match you against a non-full pre-made group or a bunch of solo queues. Because of your benefit of being in a pre-made group, the system will pick opponents which have a higher MMR as you have with your friends to make up for the lack of coordination. Does that still sound off point? Let's look at some more data which was provided from ArenaNet. According to their statistics, 46% of all games are perfectly matched according to factors like team size. Alright, that still gives us 54% complete mismatches, doesn't it? Well, from all mismatches, roughly 69% are only off by one which means there might be a two-man group within a bunch of solo queues. But still, wouldn't it be possible that we match everything even more precisely and compromise on a bit of queue time? I doubt that's undoable. However, 
only 1% of all matches played in ranked are five man groups against five randomly assigned players. That's one match out of 100 played. The last data, however, was in my opinion the most interesting though. If you play with five random people against a full group, your chances to win are statistically 52%. This might sound surprising, but when you consider that the system tries to compensate pre-made groups with players with a higher skill, this begins to make more sense. Alright, that was quite some input. I hope I could help you to understand the matchmaking better and to give you a broader view. During the explanation I distanced myself from any judgement, but if you're interested, this is what I think. In a perfect world where you only play against setups which are completely equal, you will have a win ratio of 50%. If it's 60% your enemies are not skillful enough, if it's 40% they are probably too strong. Still, I find that we are getting pretty close to the number overall. And don't get me wrong, losing 10 matches in a row is very frustrating. However, I never heard a player complain because he won 10 matches in a row. When I think about these things in the form of a bigger picture, I realize that winning 10 matches is just as likely as losing 10 matches, which makes it equal, 50-50 so to say. And as always, thanks for watching and good luck, have fun!